Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're back with the 35mm SLRs, um, but this time from Yashica. This dates from the late 70s, I think it's from 1977 through to about 1981. And uh, this is the uh, Yashica FR2. Quite a basic model and this isn't a very good example of one to be honest, but uh, we have to show all the cameras that we have because it's such a huge collection. Interesting thing about these is in the early 70s, Yashica and um, Contacts worked together. Um, Porsche got involved and designed the very beautiful and quite rare, rare nowadays, the Contacts RTS. And um, the Yashica version of the Contacts RTS was the FR. Very different sort of camera. Um, electronic shutter release. There was an FR1, um, which we'll show in a later video, as well as an FR, and there was the FR2. This particular one is the entry level camera. It is an auto only camera. Um, it uses aperture priority. So you select the aperture that you want to shoot with and the camera will match that to the, uh, the corresponding shutter speed. So you can see where there's normally a shutter speed dial on this one. It has very few settings and it has a B setting, the automatic setting and the flash sync setting, which I believe is a 60th. So looking at the front, we have the lens. There were two um, series of lenses really for these cameras. There was this one, the DSB series, which is the entry level series. And there was the ML series. The ML is the higher quality, more expensive lenses that go with it and the two cameras shared a bayonet mount commonly referred to as the cy mount the contacts yashica so you can see the lens this is fitted with a 55 f2 fairly uninspiring but yeah you can see it's coated it's quite a nice looking lens yashica lens is generally a fairly nice it's quite smooth to remove it there's a button on the side here and this is the lock so it's locked on push that button in or turn it anti-clockwise and it will remove it's just a three lug i'm not sure what the diaphragm is like on this one let's have a look and stop it down and have a look and see what the iris is like yeah, it looks pretty good actually there's a little bit of oil on there you can see the dark shiny patch on there. there's a little bit of oil but not too bad at all this is flopping about this is your um, self timer and this is this camera does need some work but there we can see the throat of the camera not a lot else to see on the front a couple of lug straps on the back we have a film reminder tab other than that it's pretty plain there's a viewfinder up here this is the metering button when you take this out this will then slide across so it will show you the metering inside self-resetting frame counter this is the weak spot on all of these this series of cameras on this one it doesn't work either they normally stop working but that's not really a big issue to be honest um, shutter release is this button in the middle here this is the selector so you have the auto you have the flash synchronization speed and you have B and that is it. There's no choice of manual shutter speeds. Hot shoe on the top. This little button here is the battery test. And that should illuminate. There you can see it. If this camera's going to focus. Standard Yashica fashion illuminates in the frame counter window. Little green light. It does have exposure compensation which is this dial over here. So normally it would be on one times, but you can two times, four times over a half and a quarter underneath. So you can dial in your exposure compensation. So difficult subjects like snow or backlit subjects, and you can use that function. ASA is set by this dial on the outside. It's the usual lift up and turn. And again, this isn't particularly brilliant condition for working this is set to something ridiculous like about a thousand rewind crank 35 mils so obviously at the end of it you've got to rewind your film 
this is the pull up type open up the back now we can see the pressure plate this holds the film cassette in you can see this one needs a bit of work slotted multi-slotted take-up spool sprocket drive um, horizontal cloth shutter so flashing is going to be a 60th nothing very remarkable on the bottom we have the battery compartment this takes I think the, uh, the 6.2 volt batteries that uh, Yoshika quite like using these batteries and never really got into the SR44s etc yeah it's the big 6.2 volt battery that sits in there positive facing out does need a battery there's no mechanical functions on the camera at all I think Yoshika provided a lot of the electronics with the contacts RTS I think that was the part of the deal was that they supplied the uh, the electronics push in to rewind pretty standard should pop out when you wind on but this camera has some issues with winding on tripod mount in the middle of the lens very nice contacts for a winder so winder would physically wind here and electrical contacts there as you can see this camera doesn't like winding on it has some issues inside and if you look at the bottom here where this drive is this isn't straight this is offset to a certain degree but if I get in there with a screwdriver I can turn it but you can see it's not sitting correctly this camera obviously needs to have its bottom removed and inspected to see what's going on there if I put a screwdriver in there I can, I can turn it the wind on is quite stiff that's it wound on so you can put the meter in on there in the viewfinder on the right hand side there's a scale of shutter speeds very much like the Olympus and a lot of other cameras and a needle that will indicate the, uh, the selected shutter speed or the one that the camera thinks best suits it I would say on this the, cat, the, the shutter is stepless so it might indicate 125th but it might actually be shooting 118th or 120th or 130th it is a stepless shutter which I quite like stepless shutters no mirror lockup um, the camera does work it's just it has this issue with winding on so I suspect there's something amiss inside but yeah the camera does work it does function it just needs a bit of TLC and I think there's obviously somebody's been in there messing about with it like I say it's an entry level model from the FR range um, other versions do have manual um, selection as well as aperture priority but this is an entry level version really just aperture priority but that suits me i quite like aperture priority i say the om2 is one of my favorite cameras so not really a problem same as the uh the lack of indication in this part driven by plastic gear i dare say we could replace it and, and repair it but uh, i'm not really overly worried about it it's very very stiff to wind on there we go but yeah it works it's just got this issue with the wind on to mount the lens red dot to red dot turn it clockwise and there you have it that's the camera for today not a particularly nice example interesting thing to note is when you push this uh, back in this lever pops back across like so i think this is supposed to be a button here but on this one it's just rock solid it doesn't seem to do anything at all but yep that's the camera for today folks the uh, yashika fr2 um, product of the uh, cooperation between yashika and contacts and uh, yeah not a bad looking camera and uh, yeah We'll see if we can sort out its wind-on problems. You can see there, look how far 
that should be straight shouldn't it you know that's just is not right the way that is so we need to get this bottom plate off and have a look and see what's going on in there but yep that's the camera for today thank you very much for watching comments questions queries down below don't forget to like and subscribe and all the usual ebay uh, ebay youtube stuff and i look forward to seeing you in the next one